Hello, this is Sean Dockler here, or Terracon4 as I'm also known, and I'm going to be going over some of the implementation aspects of the AI turret controller. So, CT testing, I'll just call it. So this is more or less just going to be that little basic cannon turret. And here we go. Unfortunately, I have to stick these up here, otherwise the recording software doesn't like that. So, let's see, static mesh. Cannon turret has all of the required mesh components, so base, CT, base, mesh. Nope, that's the wrong one, that's the optics. I'm not going to bother writing the optic one this time around. There we go. Then the turret. CT, turret mesh. barrel. So, we'll take the barrel and parent it to the turret, and the turret will parent to the base. Then on the barrel we shall add a arrow component, which will be the emitter. Projectiles will come flying out of there, and now we just need to aim, name each thing for the naming conventions. Base 1, turret 1, Barrel. That's not right. Barrel one. Emitter one. And that's pretty much it as far as actual prep work goes in this case. And we add the AI to our controller. A couple different things. First is construction. This is where we would have changed these suffixes and added prefixes if needed, since you can have multiple of these going on in the same blueprint. But in this case, we only need one, so default works. Target acquisition. It's target search tags, a basic tag. In this case, we'll just have target. We're not going to bother with any of the other tags, so any actor out there that only has the, well, that has at least the target tag on it will be considered a viable target. And any components that have fire at tags on the individual components will be prioritized. But we only wanted to fire at components with the fire at tag as opposed to uh, also firing at the loot or other parts if they don't have that, which if the other parts are, the fire at component is hidden behind something, then this will make it so it can still, it will only fire at those, it will ignore the loot and anything else that doesn't have that. Which is useful against the little demonstration targets that I'm using. So, weapons, behaviors, barrel controls. Under barrel controls, we will wish to go and add a projectile. CT projectile and a explosion for the little effect. This is owned by Unreal, the explosion, material, particle, effects, textures, all that stuff. Those are Unreal properties simply used here for demonstration purposes. It's currently got a one second delay between its shots. We're not bothering with extra reload and other stuff. Turret's accuracy, the basic settings are in our case good enough. Predictive fire, we shall predict and projectile speed should be, I believe, around 8,000 for the cannon projectile. However fast your projectile moves per second, you'll want to put in here if you're using a predictive fire, so that we'll know how far it has to lead a target to hit. Rotation. We wish to use vertical limits, since it can only go down so much and only up so far, but it can freely rotate horizontally, so we don't have to add any horizontal limits. So, down probably about 5, up probably about 65 degrees. And with that, we are pretty much done. So, yep, every second it will now fire towards the moving target. In this case, this is an example of this little top part has the AMAT component, AMAT tag on it, while the bottom base component does not. So it will not fire at the base, even if the base is closer, or unobstructed, or anything else, it'll only fire at that part. So, with this, we've got a basic little turret working for us. Now we shall move on and look at a few other things. Rather than making them custom, though, we're just gonna go through what they've already got. In this case, we want to spin the fan, so that is included in this actor's blueprint. 
then we've got these here. A base, which is an invisible cube. Um, a the turret part, the barrel, and the emitter, all ending with one. Then down here, base two, turret two, barrel two, emitter two. So we've got two turrets on this in one blueprint. Scrolling down, you'll see under construction script, turret suffix one, and on the second controller, turret suffix two. So with this, this controller will go after this turret, while the first controller will go after this top turret. So looking at the top turret, let's go over some of its settings. Same basic stuff for aiming. It needs to pick up a target. Uh, we've got a different projectile, smaller one and an extra small on fire effect. Delay between shots, much smaller, so it will only wait 0 0.05 seconds before firing its next projectile. It will also fire 30 shots before it has to reload. It will have a 1.2 second delay when it reloads. It does not have limited ammo total or anything, so this just makes it a bit more interesting, firing in bursts. Turret accuracy. Margin of error is much higher. This means it will fire if the target is within its rough line of sight. Otherwise, like the cannon, it will only fire once it's pointing almost right at the target. This one will start firing as soon as it's pointed in the general direction, 14 degrees. Weapon spread, that's how much the projectiles will vary as they're being fired. Initial target variation. This means that the turret will, upon first acquiring a target, start out at around 13 degrees, where it will find a random point within that variation to aim at. And then, after a while, it will be down to a 1 degree variation. It will adjust the aim after 0.1 seconds, which means every time it finds a new point to aim at, it will almost immediately start finding a new point. It will adjust its aim over towards the new point over 0.4 seconds. So the result is it's going to be constantly shifting its aim around while slowly getting in towards the actual finer point. It'll improve its accuracy over 6 seconds. And there's a few options here, so if a new target is found immediately next to where the old target was within a short period of time, it can retain a little bit of that accuracy modifier. So, predict fire, 5,000 is the speed of these projectiles, rotation speeds and stuff, pretty much all the same basic things. And with that, let's take, why don't I screw that up? Okay. And with that, let's see how this one fires. You'll notice it starts out pretty inaccurate firing these bursts. And then, as time goes on, they get more and more accurate. Still a bit of a spread, but that's the goal of this particular turret. Next, we have the laser turret. Fun little one. And a good bit more complex in certain aspects. First, you'll notice the part that we've got a base and a skeletal mesh. So in this case, well, the base is this, the turret, and barrel, or the horizontally and vertically rotating parts, are just cubes. Disabled collision made them invisible. They're simply there so that the controller has something to rotate. The emitter, and then the skeletal mesh is attached to the barrel, so it will end up pointing at the final direction. The uh, uh, blueprint itself will receive, thanks to the AI turret blueprint interface, which it was given, it will be given messages on when it should be firing from the AI turret controller. This will tell it which animations it needs to start messing around with, and then we've got a simple little bob up and down on a timeline effect for the turret. So this part bob is up and down, and this section can animate when it starts firing. Looking at the controller itself, pretty much the same basic stuff on target acquisition, for projectiles, though, we have to have a special type of projectile for these, and projectile is continuous laser. Decent bit of text there, but it's rather important. In this case, it will spawn a single projectile upon actually spawning the turret itself in, and that projectile will be given various event messages telling it what it actually needs to be doing. No predictive fire, no projectile speed, it's just firing straight at where the target is. Vertical limits, a few of those things, for the most part, simple stuff. At this point, we need to go and look into the actual laser itself. The laser itself has a continue upon spawning, it's given its parent emitter. 
so it knows what it's effectively stuck to and attached to, where it's being fired from. Continuous laser begin fire, it gives it its target, target component, tells it it's firing, enables the tick events, and makes the laser itself visible. And vice versa when it ends firing. So once the tick event starts and it is in fact firing, then it will, through this, get the target component's world location and sent that as the endpoint. You could also get the center of mass location if that's what you need, but this is more or less what allows the laser to fire at its target point. So, the laser. There it is. Starts the animation. It's a somewhat rough system. You do better off using an animation graph to smoothly make all this stuff work, but for demonstration purposes, I did a quick and simple approach. And it simply points directly at the target. And over here we can take a look at it when it's got some cover going on. The object comes out of cover and starts firing. And while also bobbing up and down. And then the object will go down behind cover and it will stop firing. So, next, let's go and try and look at the missile turret. The missile turret, you will notice, has a lot of emitters. <laughs> a lot. Same basic idea as far as the components, but there's no base mesh on this one, so we simply use an invisible cube. Now, as far as the controller itself goes, same standard stuff on target acquisition tags. And firing a projectile. Accuracy margin of error. Since the projectile's guided, it does need to be pointed directly at it, so we up that a bit. And then the simple rotational limits. For this, all the interesting stuff comes then afterwards in the missile itself. Upon spawning, it's given its targets. It also has to set its initial speed, velocity, and lifetime limits that will make it eventually explode if it just doesn't hit anything. Here, upon exploding or hitting something, it would then set off its explosion effect, and you'd also add your damage and whatever after that. On an event tick, assuming it has been armed, which means after firing, I tend to like my missiles to fly straight for, for a short moment before they will start actually seeking targets, so I have a little armed option after a short delay. In this case, we have get all hostile actors, and see if they're within range of the missile with a for each loop, get components by tag, for each loop, get world location. So if any part of a given actor is within a certain range, the proximity fuse, it can effectively detonate. So it doesn't have to directly hit stuff. That's useful for air bursting, rounds, missiles, and all that stuff. And then over here we have the target component's primitive aim at center of mass. So the basic idea is that we need to know where we're aiming at. And one approach is simply to get the world location of the target component, but if it is a primitive component, then we can get its center of mass and find the locale rotation from that. So, simple little option for that. I added a bit more effort into the, the missile for demonstrating this. And then finally, we just set its rotation and update its location. And with that, we have a missile turret that will fire missiles that seek after the target with a bit of delay over here, adjusting the settings so that it will find new targets far more quickly under the target acquisition settings, and making it fire missiles far more frequently with a larger uh, margin of error for accuracy, and you can get an effect like this. So, hopefully you found this to be useful for getting a basic idea of the turret controller and how you can actually quickly make use of it made it to work in as for large of a variety of different situations as possible for all the different various wacky things I come up with. I use it on tanks, anti-aircraft platforms, uh, attack helicopters, spaceships. I've used it on a lot of different stuff. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and if you've got any questions or anything, be sure to leave them in the comments below or send me an email or whatever. I'm always open for feedback and all that stuff. So have a good one.